Sociology. Today, as I said, we are going to talk about sort of the final part of cognitive dissonance, but it's an interesting part. There's a few studies that have been done that are interesting. Uh, one of the studies I'm going to talk about and the other study I'm going to give you from a video which has some text that's very disorienting. It'll make you dizzy. You'll see what I mean in a second. And it is learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is kind of like it sounds. And this experiment has to do with the dog. So uh, what happens to this dog is they have three of this dog. We'll call them dog number one, two, and three. So they do different things to these dogs. You're gonna have to bear with my artwork. Also, this experiment was done a long time ago and they don't have the same standards back then as they do now for cruelty to animals. So this is a little bit of that, but it illustrates a point. Uh, the other experiment, which I'm gonna have you watch that video is also about animals, but anyway, dog number one, they put all three dogs in little harnesses. So here's harness for dog number one, so they can't move. Harness for dog number two, so he can't move. And harness for dog number three, so he can't move. Dog number one is the control dog, so nothing happens to dog number one. Dog number two and three, something happens to them. So dog number one through this, we'll call it a 30 minute period, I don't know how long it was, but a 30 minute period where uh, dog number one just hangs out in a harness. Sounds good. Dog number two and three are both electrocuted. But, so a little bit painful but not damaging to the dog ultimately. I didn't design the experiment, don't get mad at me. Dog number two has a lever that he's been trained to press that he can put his paw on the lever Bink, bink. And when he puts his paw on the lever, the shock goes away. Cool. Dog number two and three both get shocked at random. Dog number two, whenever he, and the shock continues until this lever is pressed. Dog number three also has a lever, but when dog number three presses the lever, nothing happens. Bing, bing. Something only, the shock only goes away when dog number two presses his lever, but dog number two and three are shocked at different times. So dog number one, nothing happens, no shocks. Dog number two uh, is shocked and he has control over his shocks. Whenever he's shocked, he quickly presses the lever, shock goes away. Dog number three is shocked, but when he presses the lever, nothing happens. It just kind of seemingly randomly goes away because he has to wait for dog number two to press his lever to stop dog number three's shocks. Cool. Go to part two of the experiment, which is where these three dogs are put into a new environment. So the dog, all three of the dogs are placed on the left side of this barrier. And then uh, a shock is applied. So shock is applied. The barrier on the other side of the barrier is no shock. So smiley face for no shock. Dog number one, if you think if in, in class I would actually stop and make people guess, but dog number one, nothing ever happened to this dog. By the way, this fence is big enough that the dog, dog can jump over it, but it's, it's kind of high. So dog number one gets shocked, right? What do you think dog number one does? And dog number one jumps over because he is scared by the shock. He hasn't been shocked recently. So he tries to escape the shock, jumps over into happiness, and he's good. He's no longer shocked. Cool, that's dog number one. Dog number two. What do you think dog number two does? And dog number two that got shocked previously and was able to stop the shock jumps over. He knows that he has control over environment and when shocks have happened to him in the past, he's been able to escape the shocks. So he jumps over into happiness. Dog number three. Dog number three just lays there and gets shocked. He just lays down and uh, whimpers. Because he has learned learned to be helpless. He's had acquired learned helplessness, which is a trait where you um, feel that you have no control over your environment, so you don't try. It'd be like, there's several examples you could give. Like in math class, if you try really hard on your first test, and you end up getting like, I don't know, a C, and you think, ah, that's not so good. So you try even harder on your second test, and so you get like a C minus or a D and you think, ugh, what's the point? I'm just not good at math. And here's the important part is maybe if you would have tried, you would have gotten a B or an A, but because you don't try, because you acquire learn helplessness, you stop trying. And so you learn to be helpless, you stop trying, and of course you're gonna continue to fail. Just like dog number three that in the past has learned that he has no control over his environment. Same thing would be um, in sports. If you try really hard and you fail and then you stop trying, 
so you don't run the 5k race that you wanted to same thing would be on dating if you ask a girl or a guy out and they say no and then you ask someone else out and they say no and you now resign yourself to being alone the rest of your life and you never ask anybody else so that's what could happen with that when if you just keep trying eventually possibly you would have succeeded but you learn to be helpless like the third dog so on classroom i'm going to link the other video i need you to watch as well as a google doc to fill out and uh that is today the next day in class we will have a quiz over cognitive dissonance i will be back on tuesday